This is one of a series of videos based on my research into the biology of the Florida harvester ant, Pergana myrmex badius. This ant is conspicuous in the Sandhills pine forests of Florida because it decorates its nest discs with bits of charcoal that contrast with the white sand. In several previous videos I showed how I have made plaster or metal casts of the underground nests. Here I am pouring dental plaster. Later I worked with molten aluminum melted in a charcoal fired kiln. Is it glowing? These casts were strong and transportable. Nests are often quite deep. You can find links to these videos in the description and on the end screen. These casts revealed a surprising size, beauty and complexity of the nests. Many of my metal casts of harvester ant colonies reside in mu museums around the world. It may be surprising that ant colonies that build nests of this size and complexity relocate to new nests often. But they do. Revisiting a tagged nest after a few months or a year often reveals a faded charcoal disc and an active new nest nearby. In this video I explore several aspects of nest relocation. In order to characterize this tendency to relocate their colonies, I and my assistants tagged and mapped over 400 colonies at Ant Heaven. Using Google Earth maps of the colony locations, we revisited every colony six to eight times a year for five years to determine its status and location. If a colony had moved, its new location was added on Google Earth color-coded for the date of the move. Ellipses show the locations of colonies that moved during 2014. Summarized over two years, colonies moved an average of about once a year. A few restless colonies moved as often as four times in one summer, and a few complacent ones moved only once in three years. Most moves, shown in red, took place during the summer. About 20 to 30 percent of colonies moved each month during July and August, or about 1 percent per day. There were almost 900 moves in two years, shown in blue. The average distance moved was only about 4 meters, and very few moved 10 meters or more. Colonies moved only within their territory. The direction of individual moves was random, as it also was across the population. The more often the colony moved, the left panel, the more distance they covered, the right panel, but the closer they ended up to its original location, again showing the left panel. In effect, colonies were doing a random walk around a point. This raises the question of why colonies move so often. Perhaps the new nest is larger or physically different. To test this, we excavated and mapped the abandoned nest, and about 10 to 14 days later, the new nests with all its workers' seeds and so on. The blue shows the chambers of the old nest, and the red, the new. 
In all measures, the new nest was very similar to the abandoned nest, although usually a bit smaller because excavation was still in progress. The distribution of chamber area, also called the nest shape, left, left graph, was similar in the old and the new, as was the distribution of old young workers and seeds. The question why move is thus still open. Perhaps the reason lies in sanitary conditions, parasites, mold, but none of these have been tested. It's remarkable that the ants expend so much labor and energy in digging a nest would move so often, but more remarkable still is how quickly they accomplish a move. During 2013, my assistants and I observed nine moves from start to finish. We observed and timed traffic on the trail, counted the number of workers in each direction, counted workers carrying brood, seeds, or charcoal. This required an observer to sit by the trail side with a tally counter for large parts of many days and many moves. It was not work for the impatient. The time between the first detection of a move and its completion was only four to six days. Workers on the trail moved in both directions, the top panel, but on average slightly more toward the new nest, causing workers gradually to accumulate in the new nest. Seed transport in red peaked along with worker transport, but brood transport, the pink, peaked earlier and charcoal transport, the black, later. The counts showed a relatively predictable pattern with worker traffic and transport peaking about day three and four and finishing mostly by day six. Traffic began in the morning and finished by nightfall with a lull during the heat of the day. This pattern changed with season peaking earlier in October. Temperature range is shown in gray time blocks on the x-axis. In the end, we learned a lot about nest relocation in harvester ants, its frequency, season, distance, direction, speed, and worker behavior and transport. Nevertheless, the reason why the ants move and move so often is still a mystery. In biology, questions of how, when, where can be answered in great detail but questions of why resist easy answers. There could be many reasons why ants move so often, each supported by correlations. Which should we choose? Most often we choose the one that makes the best story. But what is the best story here? We've eliminated some good stories, but this only narrows the options that we have imagined. It's highly likely that the move is initiated by foragers, but even if it is, where did the, de where did the decision originate? Do they receive a community-level command? If so, on what basis do the com does the community decide to move? How does it communicate this to the foragers? Each question spawns more questions. There is a haunting parallel between the collective decisions of ant colonies and the collective decisions of human societies that are driven by cultural forces beyond the consciousness of its members. In trying to understand ant societies, we have to focus on the collective actions of many individuals that operate without a leader or plan. It seems likely there is much to be learned about human societies from the collective nature of ant social behavior. Might this possibly be a payoff from what might seem the useless study of ant societies? <laughs>